Hi there, my name is Barend Emmerzaal and I'm a business consultant from the Netherlands. Today I want to talk about Sitecore Experience Accelerator and I'm personally working with SXA for one and a half years now and I love the product because it's, it's enabling me as a non-developer to quickly create sites and get for example demos started. The first thing that you should want to do when you start with SXA is creating a site and that is a two-step process. So when you have installed SXA you can go to the content editor and you will see things like site core node, the content node, the home and perhaps email but the tenant node that you will see in my uh, application will not be there. You have to create a tenant first and from there you can create a site within a tenant. Now to do that you can right click on the content node, choose insert and then you will see two options, a tenant folder and a tenant. Now the tenant folder is mainly used to structure your tree and it can be used to reflect your organizational structure. So let's say that you have um, uh, a holding um, with several brands and each brand has several websites. You can create a tenant folder for your uh, group you can perhaps create a tenant for each brand and within a tenant you can create multiple sites. What is also very important to know that everything that you create within a tenant in terms of sites can be shared within a tenant. So each tenant has a set of data templates which are stored in the templates section um, but you can also share other stuff like rendering variants, um, themes, um, etc. Et so it's important to um, think first how your organizational structure should be reflect, how you would like to use SXA in terms of sharing content, sharing elements of sites, and then start creating your structure. So in this video we're only focusing on the tenant and site creation, so I'm going to create a new tenant and you will see that a new creation wizard dialog is loaded. Now this is only a single step wizard and you can create a tenant name, so let's say brand A and in here you will see a set of modules that you can select or deselect. Now I will leave them select it for now but what it does is that in the background when um, a feature or module is selected it will create all kinds of stuff for you in terms of data templates, folders, um, uh, adding components and all other things and scripts that are needed to make the creation process very easy for you. So let's say that you are deselecting search you will not get modules that you can use on your sites to create search. We will leave that on for now, click on OK and we have to wait a couple of seconds or minutes because this can take a little while. So let's speed up the process. There it is, it's done. So we're clicking the close button and as you can see here you will see the brand A tenant. Now when I select it, um, it does not have anything beneath it but when we're looking at the item you will see several configuration settings like the templates location, like themes location, media library location, all the different modules that you have selected and even things like shared sites. So when you start creating sites you can use one site within your tenant that is served or has the role of a shared site and you can use it for example to store content that is the same on each site, for example contact information of a spokesman or if you have product information on all different brand sites that is equal, equal you can store that uh, product information in that single site use that as a selected site and all the different brand sites within this tenant can use that information. Now when you have created a tenant um, you will notice that in the tree on some places new folders are created so you see the templates location here when we go to site core templates project you will see that you have a brand A folder now and in here here are a bunch of default data templates data templates that are already created uh, the same applies for media library so when we go to media library and we go to project you will see the brand A tenant 
So this is something that is created for you and the same applies for the site creation part. It will also create some folders. So let's start by creating a new site. We right click on the tenant, choose insert and as you can see here you will also have a site folder like the tenant folder and a site item. Now the site folder like the tenant folder can be used to structure your tree. We will leave that for now. So we're clicking on the site item and again a new wizard is loaded. And you will notice that you will have more options here. So you will see four tabs, general, modules, theme and grid. Now let's start with the general. We can give the site a name. So let's say it's www.brandA.com. It's the corporate site for example. You can add a host name. Um, this can be anything of course but oh, this will not be allowed by the way. I'm sorry. Let's paste it here. Let's choose brand A corporate website for the name. Now you will notice that by entering the host name here it will not automatically work because you will have to make sure that the host name is added to Internet Information Services as a binding. Um, it must be added to your DNS, etc. etc. So I will leave that for now like the default. Um, but you can of course choose anything you want. Now the virtual folder can be used to um, create a site on existing host name but that is accessible after the slash. So let's say that you have www.brandA.com here and you want a subsite for example for employees. So you can em add employee here and then when everything is finished you will be able to access the site in this way. So it's kind of a subfolder um, but it's in fact a complete different website. So that's very powerful and this is something that's all handled by SXA. So by adding the host name you will not have anything to do with DNS, um, Internet Information Services and bindings and stuff like that. So it's very powerful. Now in my setup my host name is um, a local one so I'm adding a virtual folder to be able to access it here. We will leave the, the language to the default and again like with the tenant you will have a bunch of modules that you can select or deselect and in the background PowerShell scripts are running to create all kinds of stuff for you. Um, now it's good practice to uh, think first which modules you will need um, because it will create a lot of folders, a lot of data templates. Um, it will copy uh, renderings and stuff like that. Um, and you probably don't need everything. Your site structure will be um, pretty big. So be critical at first what you will need um, because you can edit afterwards if you have to. So let's say we don't want the analytics for some reason. We deselect it uh, and then it will not be created. And I will show you that you can edit later on. Now, so themes. Uh, themes is used to style and design your site. There is a default theme that's called wireframe. It's only used when you start creating your user experience design. Um, we're going to create a new theme so creative agencies can style it with CSS, JavaScript, etc. And we're giving the, it the name of our company, which is Brand A. Last but not least, you will have a grid that you can choose. By default there is Bootstrap Foundation and Grid 96, 960. Um, I will use Bootstrap and that's it for now. So let's click OK and it's going to create my website. Now this can take a little while so let's speed up the process. So there we are. Our site is created. So let's hit the close button and as you can see you will now have a brand A corporate website site. Now when we open this you will see that there are different items. The home is of course the home page and in here you can you can create your site structure. Uh, the media is a virtual folder that in fact is storing all its information on the media library project brand A and then brand A corporate website folder. Um, so you can use this to quickly look up uh, all different kinds of media. Now the data folder contains for all the different modules that you select a folder and in here you can create all the different items 
that will act as data source items for your different for your components. Now, by default, a lot of components will store the information in here, but it's uh, possible to override it. We will cover that in another video. So let's leave that for now. Under the presentation, you will have different things that will influence the way your site looks like and behaves. So, for example, the partial and page designs with which you can create your page layouts, um, as you can call it. Uh, so your marketers and content authors can start adding content and of course the rendering variants um, and the different styles. Now you will see again for all different components that there are already some default rendering variants but you can create your own of course. And styles can be used to add custom CSS classes so your digital agency can create some custom styling for components. Last but not least you will have a settings item now when we're clicking on this one and then on the content tab you will see that you have lots of different settings so for example the data source behavior for non-reusable components your editing theme a favicon your grid uh, there is a lot of stuff here uh, settings for search you will also have options to influence your sitemap uh, behavior the robots.txt and your 404 page not found page or a 500 server error page. Now underneath the settings item there are a lot of other things that you can use to influence the behavior of your site both for your visitors and for your uh, content authors or marketers. Um, and one of the most important things that I want to point out is the site grouping and then the brand a corporate website item because this is the place where your site name uh, your target host name and your host name uh, and virtual folder uh, settings are stored uh, as well as your starting uh, start item page um, so now that we have created a site let's go to the data templates item to show you that here there is no folder so it's still the tenant but as you saw with the media library you will have a brand a um, corporate website here and when we're looking at themes you will also see that you will have a brand a tenant and a brand a corporate website so this shows you that within a tenant regarding regarding regardless the amount of sites uh, the data templates are the same they are shared but in terms of themes if you select one to create a new one for a site um, it will create a different folder and a separate team um, as well as the virtual folders that will be created for your site so please be aware about that structure um, and now you know where to find which settings now there's one last thing that I want to uh, explain to you um, let's say that you have created a site or a tenant and you want to delete them you could can click right mouse and choose delete but this will only delete this item and anything beneath it and it will not delete all the folders and other stuff like themes that you have created in for example templates and the media library so SXA has some powerful scripts that can help you with that so when you choose right mouse click on the site then scripts you will see here that you will have the remove site option now when you click this uh, the wizard is loaded and it will help you delete everything that is related to this site um, so it will do a proper cleanup and the same applies for the tenant so when you right click your, with your mouse on the brand A tenant item choose scripts you will see remove tenant now remember that we have unselected the analytics module um, so when we want to edit afterwards I can right click on the site choose scripts and now we have an option called add site module so let's click on this one. Oh no I don't want to change and it will load the add site module wizard and in here you will see all the modules that are available that I did not add on the site creation wizard and it can be added afterwards. So let's click cancel for now. Um, the same applies for tenant right click scripts add tenant module now remember that we didn't 
unselect any modules at the tenant so there are no modules to, to be deployed here uh, but you can imagine if you have unselected any they will appear here and it's possible to add your cu own custom modules or to make copies of existing SXA modules um, and they will automatically be added to this kind of wizards so they can be added to the different sites or tenants when you want to so that's it for now you can now start by designing your site uh, with partial and paste designs or you can do a test by directly opening this home item in the experience editor um, and it will allow you to quickly get up and running because you will see several places, placeholders as they are called in Sitecore, where you can start adding your components and content by simply going to the toolbox and choose for example rich text and drag and drop it on a page and you will be good to go. So there you have it, you can start adding, adding your text, saving and if you publish it, it will be available to your end users. So that's it for now. In the next video I will focus on the creation of partial and page design and get you up and running to create a simple layout um, which is the next step in the SXA site creation part. So thanks for watching and see you in the next video.